All right, Graham, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to watch a silent film, or a couple of silent films. I've got some choices for you here. I'm gonna introduce you, I'm gonna guide you by the hand into the wonderful world of silent cinema, uh, picking a few films from the massive cinema collection. I know you've got all of them, more than me even, which is quite a feat unto itself. So let's just start off, because I think what you should do is at least watch two silent films. So bear with me. Uh, first of all, you're going to go to your shelf or wherever your, your Master Cinema collection is currently housed and pick out the Buster Keaton collection. So many great films on this, but what you need to do is go to the second disc and watch a film called One Week. Now, it's about 20 minutes long. Uh, it's just a wonderful introduction, I think, to Buster Keaton's uh, style of filmmaking um, and silent comedy in general. It's one of the best ones, I think. Uh, maybe not the best, but I think it's a nice and easy, kind of breezy entry into silent comedy. So I think you'll enjoy that one. And that'll be kind of your, uh, your starter. But for the main course, you've got two options here. Um, if you're feeling adventurous, which you might not be, I would say dive right into the deep end with Metropolis. Um, it's just one of the best films ever. I uh, don't need to even set it up or talk about it in any way, shape or form. But it's a film you just need to experience and just, just pump the volume up, listen to the amazing original score from 1927. And uh, yeah, this, this is just... I'd love to hear your thoughts on this as a first time watcher of silent films. But if you're not kind of ready to jump into a two and a half hour long silent film, which is understandable, uh, the kind of softer option, but no less great, is spine number one of the collection, Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans. Another one of the greatest films of all time, in my opinion. Uh, again, I think it's only about an hour and a half. Uh, you're 93 minutes, and you should probably watch the, um, the movie tone version. That's kind of the original American version of the film. Well worth watching, uh, that one. And just it's a very simple story. I don't even want to say anything about it to you, but if you're not moved by this film, or if you're not kind of... Um, uh, touched by it in some way, then there's probably something wrong with you. But uh, I, I think if you if you watch that Buster Keaton film and you watch this and you're not really into the whole feel of it, then the silent films are probably not for you. But good luck. I, I look forward to seeing what you pick and uh, and to hearing your thoughts. So get to it. Okay, look. Thanks for the challenge. I guess I need that little push to go and check out some of these silent films. I have a lot in my collection, like you see. I've got a lot of Masters of Cinema movies, and where I may have more than you, you've definitely watched more than me, and you are the master of silent cinema. So I take your suggestions on board, and I'm ready to delve into this silent world. Now, I don't remember seeing any before, so this is a new kind of adventure for me, and I do have some preconceptions about the sooty medium. I imagine that it's going to be hard to tell an intricate story because there's no uh, vocals in it whatsoever, it's all played through sound and kind of boards that pop up and give you a little sentence of what kind of going on. I think that they're going to really interrupt the flow of the movie because they're going to be constant pop, just popping up, just telling me things about the movie, breaking up the actual visual medium of it. I think they're going to be static cameras, it's not really going to move, it's going to be played out. People doing wild, exaggerated movements is acting and that's what I'm taking into this, probably not the most positive of viewpoints, but I'm willing to give it a shot. And you have chosen for me two to get me started on my silent cinema schooling. And the first one that you chose for me was Buster Keaton's One Week. Again, never heard of this. I picked it up in the Masters of Cinema Buster Keaton set, which is full of stuff that I, I'm probably gonna have to work my way through, but I'm sure you'll set me up with more from that. It's a 20 minute short movie. It's a, it's a movie about a married couple who get bought a house, they have to build it, and the plans get done wrong, they build the house wackily. It's a comedic sketch. It feels very much like a live-action version of a Looney Tunes cartoon. As the character, the man, builds this weirdly shaped house, and I've got to say, the production value looked tremendous. The people were moving fairly quickly. There wasn't a lot um, a stopping and starting this movie. It just There was long shots, there was static cameras, but it was always interesting. It was always funny. I loved the athleticism on show here. Some of it was outstanding, the way he can fall seven or eight feet and as he lands, he bounces and rolls about the place and has such control of his body. I was kind of laughing and then also kind of in awe as well because I was like, wow, I couldn't do that. 
it looked tremendous. It looks good on film and it doesn't look as if there's any weird cuts because you have this long static shot. You see the full motion and it's tremendous to see. There's one stunt in particular that I really liked and it's when he's building the house and there's lots of fun scenes within the house but I liked the part where he's up at the top window and his wife's at the bottom window and they reverse so that he's down the bottom, she's up the top. I thought it was really well done and I just, one of those... Moments that you're like, wow, somebody actually did that. If that was to happen nowadays, there'd be several stunt people on hand and uh, all kinds of things. So as a kind of stripped back novelty about it that I really, really did like. I, I thought it was pretty funny. I don't know how to gauge it against anything else because there's nothing I know that even relates remotely to this. But I did know that I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was really funny and I just generally liked it. But again, there's not much of a story here. There's, there's just a, a light basics to queue up the gags. But I'm sure that's what it's designed for. So it makes me a little bit worried about how movies are going to play out. But these static long shots with, the, you know, not a lot of real story getting told. It's more comedic moments. And 20 minute bunches is just perfect for this kind of stuff. And I enjoyed that. It's like bite size. I'm a little bit worried about going into the actual full length movies, how they're going to fare. Which brings me on to my next choice. You gave me two choices. You gave me Sunrise, a song with two humans, a movie by F.W. Murnau that I've heard of. It's in the Masters Cinema, as most of these are going to be, and I've got that. And then you offered up Metropolis, a movie that I think any movie fan has probably heard of, probably seen. It is regarded as one of the greatest movies of all time. And from silent era movies, if you ask me to name one or two, that's going to be in that list of ones that I know of. So when it came to the choices, I had a limited time scale. So I had Sunrise, which was 90 minutes. I had Metropolis, which was two and a half hours. So Sunrise won. So, like I said, I wasn't sure truly what I was expecting from this, but I put it on to be really marvelled with its technical ability within the movie. I was shocked. The camera moves. There's certain scenes where the camera follows the, the town lady out of our building, down the street, a tracking shot that I just never expected to see in a silent movie that I would have took for granted in a movie nowadays, but in that time scale, in this movie that came out in 1929, I was marvelling at it. The way they sort of merged shots where they had the, the couple, the, the country guy and the town lady lying in a swamp and the sky turned into the city, bustling city as they're watching it was tremendous. It's, it plays so much with these visual elements, really, at the start. They've got trains cutting across one side of the screen and another one cuts across another side of the screen. They have a beach, but they have a boat on one side coming towards it. There's lots of visual elements to keep you interested in the actual story that's happening. Well, not the story, but the actual visual medium. You're interested to see what's going to come next. I'm sure there's like early prototypes of like green screen when, when the wife and her husband are walking down the street and cars are intercutting them and then it appears into a woods. It feels like that's a, a back projected but then they cut some of the images out so they pass in front of them. As, I, hey, I have no idea how they did it. I thought it was tremendous. I was really in on it. As for the storytelling, I was really interested in it. I liked the fact that it had flash forwards, it had uh, flashbacks, it told the story in several ways that were interesting visually and I wasn't expecting it. And all these ticks kind of took my breath away. I, I, I really wasn't expecting it. Look, it was Marvel to see and I, I really enjoyed it. But as much as it is interesting visually, it's hard to get a real feeling for something if the story's not there. And the story is kind of basic. The story is about a countryside, a vacationing town, this woman from the, the town, uh, from the city, comes to the town and kind of catches the eye of a farmer and takes him away from his wife and she comes out with the plot of killing the wife so that they can sell the farm and move to the city and enjoy their life together. And it's kind of put me on the back burner straight away because I was like, I, I don't like this woman at all. And you know what, I don't think I like the guy either because the two kind of nefarious people with bad plans and this woman's working hard to provide and they're just kind of taking her for granted. And they're going to get rid of her just for the sake of it. And the movie starts to build up this real tension. There's a moment when the man's thinking about doing the murder and he sits up in bed and he's thinking about it and there's these ghostly images of the the, 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 town, the city lady putting her arm around about him or kissing him or when he turns away she appears a ghostly figure beneath him. 
always kind of cupping the space. I have no idea how they did this. I think it was a tremendous visual that really told the story that he felt under pressure to do this. It was on his mind, it was weighing him down. And when it gets to that boat trip as he takes her out because he's going to drown her, I was at the edge of my seat. I didn't know what was going to happen. I was terrified for this woman. There's a chance where she could get out the boat and you think she's going to, and she doesn't. And you, you fear the worst. And I honestly thought, if this happens, I think I'm going to have to just go and visit, look and have a stern word with him about putting me onto such a movie like this. But things don't transpire that way. And it becomes a story of these two reconnecting their love through just having a, a day out, just enjoying things, just doing whatever the hell they want, spending the money, doing fun things that they never usually do, just having a day to themselves. And throughout this day, they reconnect, they fall back in love, and they're together again and happy. And I was captivated. I was in it with the couple. I was enjoying their adventure. I was enjoying watching them grow together and come back together and realise that they're really made for each other and just their ideal. I, I was there with them. And then as the movie gets to the end and they're in the boat trip home, I was terrified. I didn't know what was going to happen here. I, at first I thought the man was going to die, then I thought the woman was going to die. And when they fall into the water and the people are trying to save them and you're like, oh, oh, what's going to happen? And, and you keep expecting it to wait to the last minute before he's going to discover his wife and save her. He, I, I was waiting. I was at the just, they're letting us just get a little bit worried here. They're going to find her soon. Please let her find her soon. And they don't, and I, I, I'm honestly, I was terrified, I was terrified, but we, we get an ending that is very satisfactory and really saved the movie for me. If this couple didn't end up together, if the wife didn't end up happy and, and just satisfied with everything, I would have been really angry. I really would have, because this movie put me through an emotional ringer. I, I was hurt and distasteful with the movie at the start. I grew happy and in love with the couple as they grew in love with each other. And then I was sort of torn asunder at the end when I thought one of them was, was gone. They're going to ruin this family union. This movie, for a lack of dialogue, which gets less throughout the movie uh, with the board screens, really affected me. Really had me emotionally through the ringer. I loved it. I thought Sunrise, A Song of Two Humans was absolutely fantastic. And for me, easily, it's a five out of five. It's a movie I already want to go back and revisit. Especially with that, the, the music throughout it as well, that just kept me even more interested. The visuals were terrific. The music just kind of gave the story the kind of oomph and the, the emotional push that it just needed to cut out the dialogue. Look, I, I think you, you did a great choice choosing this movie for me. I absolutely loved it. And like you said, if neither of these movies did it for me, silent films not for me, well, I'm excited. I'm enthused. I'm ready to move on to the next one already. I'm quite happy to do another Buster Keaton as well. If you want to throw one of them in as a little aperitif, go for it. Let's see what you can throw up next. Uh, I don't really care. So thanks for suggesting this. Thanks for giving me the, the, the push I needed to check this out. I think it's terrific. At the end of this video, there's going to be links to my channel. Subscribe if you haven't. Luke's channel. Go and subscribe. The guy's great. And remember, come back and see part two of the silent film school as I continue my journey into this medium. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Man vs. Film.